Everything Everywhere All at Once, now A24's highest grossing movie ever, has recently hit streaming services. So now is the perfect time to explore everything, everywhere, and everything, everywhere, all at once. Except not all at once, because there's not nearly enough time to actually cover everything. So really we're only going to explore some things, in some of the places, in a 15 minute time span. Got it? Good. Let's dive in. To start this list off, the legendary everything bagel, the real inanimate antagonist of this film, was symbolized all throughout the movie. The bagel's circular appearance with a hole in the middle, I don't know why I just explained what a bagel looks like to you guys, can be seen in many scenes. In the very beginning when the camera zooms in to the mirror reflecting the Wong family, on the sheet of paper of Evelyn's business purchases that aren't actually business purchases that the IRS agent interrogates her on, the agent is then seen again with a sheet of paper stapled onto her forehead, the circle can later be seen on multiple foreheads of the followers of Jobu Tapaki and the Wong family owning a literal laundromat which is littered with circles filled with endless voids of dirty clothes. And bonus points for Alpha Raymond enjoying an everything bagel while hiding. <laughs> The googly eyes serve as the bagel's direct opposite, as instead of it being a circle with nothing to fill it, it's a circle with a moving black dot that jiggles around and looks silly. The bagel and the googly eyes represent the philosophies of nihilism and existentialism, respectively. To put it as simply as possible, the bagel is like, man, there's nothing that can fill me. And the googly eyes are like, aw oh, man, I'm empty, but I can fill myself. That's probably not the best way to explain it, but... You get the gist. The googly eye also parallels Wayman's cookies, which he gives to the IRS agent to buy Evelyn more time. Just like the items that parallel the bagel's appearance, the cookie has a little thing in the middle just like the googly eyes. I'm not the best at identifying types of cookies, I got lots of allergies. When Evelyn learns the intricate methods of pinky martial arts and ends up using it as a way to knock out her opponents into the sky, the sound effect used is a direct reference to the home run bat sound effect from Super Smash Bros. While it isn't directly taken from the games, the directors have stated that they attempted to replicate the sound as closely as possible during the sound design process. And this sound is director Daniel Kwan's personal favorite easter egg. Before the final battle of the film between Joy and Evelyn in which Evelyn decides to fight with kindness like her husband Wayman, we can see two of Joy's henchmen in the background in the iconic Wolverine pose. They both also have objects in between their fingers to represent his claws. The henchman on the left seems to have chopsticks in between his fingers while the henchman on the right is holding scissors. And just because we're talking about Disney owned properties, might as well throw in the Star Wars I Am Your Father reference by Evelyn's dad. Papa, <laughs> I'm not your father. During Alpha Wayman's brief explanation of what the heck is actually going on, he says the line, Your clothes never wear as well the next day. Your hair never falls in quite the same way. Which coincidentally are the same lyrics from the Nine Days song, Absolutely. If you're not familiar, the song was a one hit wonder from 2000 about a man who loves a girl despite her sadness. The Daniels were looking for a quick way to convey the seriousness of the situation and on the spot thought of the line. It was only after a quick google search after knowing that they heard the line somewhere else before that they realized that the lines were the lyrics to the song. And after realizing just how much the song's message lined up with the movies, the Daniels directors went on to include custom versions of the song and three different scenes outside of the Alpha Wayman line, each custom version appearing in a different universe. First was in the RV divorce scene, with the custom version of the song being a country ballad to reflect the sadness Evelyn is experiencing while coming to terms with the end of her marriage. The second time we hear the song was during the hibachi restaurant scene, with the custom version changing the lyrics to story of a chef instead of story of a girl. And you can hear it a third time during the BDS scene in which the lyrics of the song change to this is the story of a dime she ties me up so good, but it's wrong, and while she'll post uncensored photographs, I absolutely love it. My safe word is smile. I hope we don't get demonetized for that. Directors Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert, otherwise known as the Daniels, brought their previous experience as music video directors over to this project. Their most notable music video direction work is DJ Snake's Turn Down For What, and if you've seen that video, you can see that the Daniels have a knack for creating comedic, hectic, and borderline nonsensical stories. Now if you remember the lead actress from the turn down for what music video, Sunita Mani, she also appears in this film as the dancer on the TV that Evelyn is enamored with. 
This one wasn't written within the movie, but I thought it would be fun to point out some of the interesting international titles for everything everywhere all at once. The English title is already intriguing enough to make you want to know what the heck is going on with this movie's plot. Well, just imagine how people who speak languages outside of English feel. In Mandarin, the film's title translates to, in an instant, the entire universe. In Hong Kong, the title is, Weird Woman rats around and saves the universe. And in Taiwan, it simply translates to so many in universes. The Taiwanese title could also be translated to your mother's many universes. And that wasn't a joke, I'm for real. Which is much more tame. And they get a tagline that translates to even more Marvel than Marvel, which is exactly what I was thinking. This movie does the multiverse so much better than the MCU has so far. But you didn't hear that from me. That was all Chris Goodmakers. He made the MCU as a mess video. <laughs> Moving on, the three main Waymans in this film, Regular, Alpha, and CEO, all have personalities based on animals. If you notice how the three of them behave, Regular Wayman is quick to flee like a squirrel, Alpha is brave and powerful like an eagle, and CEO is quiet yet unwavering like a fox. It's probably not easy to pinpoint each of these animals after just watching the film, but in an interview with Ki Hui Kwan, he says that his body language coach taught him to distinguish the three different versions of himself by thinking of each of them as these animals. During the scenes in which Evelyn is enjoying what her life could have been as a famous actress, we get shots that are taken straight from Michelle Yeoh's career red carpet footage. At a certain point, we can even see the Crazy Rich Asian sign in the background, which makes me wonder if they're trying to say that our universe's Michelle Yeoh is actually a variant of Evelyn. And what we know of Yeoh now is yet another possibility of where her life could have gone had she had chosen not to run away with Wayman, which would also mean that Ki Hui Kwan is also just another variant of Wayman and Stephanie Shu a variant of Joy. Both of the Daniels also make a couple cameos in their film. Kwan appears as one of the dudes who try to jump Evelyn in the alleyway during during a flashback, and he's also one of the first people to get sucked into the bagel. Shiner, on the other hand, plays the guy who was into the BDS stuff, as well as the ape with the hot dog fingers, who takes out the regular finger monkeys and changes the course of all humanity. Don't you just love when directors show up in their own movies? During the scenes in which Evelyn and Wayman meet in the universe in which they both become rich and famous, the two are also revealed to be incredibly lonely, as we learn when their conversations continue. These scenes were shot to resemble Wong Kar Wai's 2000 movie, In the Mood for Love. The resemblance doesn't stop at the aesthetics though, because the themes of lost love and acting on that love that are present in Wong Kar Wai's film is also mirrored in everything everywhere all at once. Everything from the couple speaking to each other in an alleyway to the subject matter is inspired 100% by In the Mood for Love. Elvis Presley and Tupac both get referenced in the film via Joy's corrupted counterpart, Jobu Tupaki. During Jobu Tupaki's introduction scene in which we see just how powerful she really is, one of her many outfits is one of Elvis Presley's most iconic stage outfits. Now this could also be a reach, but the name Jobu Tupaki itself sounds very similar to Tupac Shakur. That's just me making an observation. In reality, the Daniels have confirmed that the name Jobu Tupaki is literally just random noises to reflect the corrupted identity of this version of Joy. Yeah, yeah, that might be the case, but my headcanon is that she's a Tupac stan, so forget everything else. When we get introduced to the creepy neckbeard dude who appears to be a regular at the laundromat, he gives himself away as being a little bit too comfortable after complimenting Evelyn's perfume. While counting his change in the midst of a family argument, it's easy to miss his microaggressive line, This is only 10. I thought you people were very good with well, that. Which they all ignore because they have bigger family issues to deal with at that moment. But there's no argument that what that man said was extremely ignorant and in a different universe his comments would probably be met with a hot dog slap to the face or a buff pinky flick to the ceiling. According to the Daniels, everything everywhere all at once would not exist without the Matrix, as the two's interest in filmmaking was revitalized after binging the films. Because of that spark of inspiration caused by the Matrix, there are many parallels. The most obvious being that they both center around a chosen one type main character who has to traverse realities outside of the ones they've grown accustomed to in order to save the world. The two films also both lean heavily on Kung Fu and martial arts for their fight scenes and action sequences. And speaking of Kung Fu, this film takes loads of inspiration from the classic kung fu films of the 70s and 80s. A lot of the fight scenes are inspired by Jackie Chan's style of fighting in these movies, and there's even a nod to the character archetype and fighting style, the Bak Mei. In Everything Everywhere All at Once, the Bak Mei is the silver-haired woman who teaches Evelyn kung fu after saving her from alley thugs. This archetype is often portrayed by an older man with white hair, a long mustache, and a beard, which Evelyn Trainer's appearance is based around. Stanley Kubrick's 1968 epic 2001 A Space Odyssey 
Odyssey also gets referenced during the scene in which the hot dog fingered apes win a key evolutionary battle that leads to humans having hot dogs for fingers. The scene is styled after the opening of Kubrick's film, which if you're not familiar starts off following apes as they learn to use tools for the very first time and leading to the dawn of humanity. Similarly, the Daniels wanted to comically illustrate the dawn of the hot dog fingered humanity. The two butt plug dudes who pulled off the greatest scene in all of cinema may look familiar if you're a fan of martial arts. The two who played these characters are none other than the brothers Brian and Andy Lee who run the Martial Club YouTube channel. Their channel features tons of martial arts content such as move tutorials, workout videos, and fun skits. The two aided in the choreography of the film's fight scenes, and if you're curious to see some behind the scenes action, there are actually a couple videos on their channel that cover their contribution to the film. Andy Lee also played the unalive dealer in Shang-Chi, so they've been in their bag recently. The Daniels also took inspiration from the Japanese animated movie Paprika, a science fiction psychological thriller following a detective investigating the case of a dream terrorist. If you have seen the film, you can probably see where the Daniels may have taken some inspiration for blurring the lines of reality. One of the most apparent parallels to Paprika is the sudden end credit scene in which Evelyn is at the premiere of her own film and the Daniels are credited for writing and directing. Paprika's ending is actually a similar scene in which the main character goes to see a movie that he stars in, which shares the same name as one of the director's unfinished films. The posters at the theater are also previous films that Paprika's director worked on. Evelyn shifts to different universes while staying in the same position is a reference to Buster Keaton's film Sherlock Jr., where there's a gag that Keaton pulls off in a similar fashion. In Sherlock Jr., Keaton plays the character of a movie theater projectionist who dreams that he has the ability to walk through the movie screen and become a part of the films being shown. While the movies switch from scene to scene, Keaton stays in one spot while appearing to be transported between scenes. This reference is not too surprising because Buster Keaton is one of those guys who's a filmmaker's favorite filmmaker. There's also a small reference to the 1985 film The Goonies. Everything Everywhere All At Once is Ki Hui Kwan's first major role in over 20 years, with him being most known for his roles in Indiana Jones and The Goonies. In The Goonies specifically, he played Richard Wong, a character who had multiple self-made inventions integrated into his outfit. One of these inventions was a belt with suction cups, which parallels Alpha Wayman's first weapon of choice, his fanny pack. Both characters also use a lot of unconventional weapons to overcome obstacles, so it isn't a stretch to assume that Wayman was somewhat inspired by his previous role as Richard Wong. And speaking of Richards, during the BDS scene, yes we're revisiting that one again, the nameplate on the desk reads Richard Long. At first glance, this may just seem like a crude joke about explicit private areas in an explicit private area scene, but it's actually a reference to one of Daniel Scheinert's previous films, The Unaliving of Dick Long. <laughs> again, not trying to get demonic here. The film was also distributed by A24 to not as much box office success, but it's probably a nod to the foot in the door this film gave the Daniels to create everything everywhere all at once. Out of all the movie references in this film, the most obvious and my personal favorite has to be the Ratatouille or Raccoonie bit. While the reference was obvious, the voice of the raccoon wasn't as much, because he doesn't appear in the film's credits. However, in Everything Everywhere All At Once, his soundtrack, the voice of the raccoon is actually listed for the song Now We're Cooking, revealing the puppet raccoon to be voiced by none other than musical icon Randy Newman. Do you guys remember the super flashy scene of Evelyn traversing through the multiverse and ending up as a rock? Well, since it's impossible to take in what exactly was shown, I took the time to go frame by frame and show you guys the most interesting frames I could find. Before we go into the more interesting frames though, after I did some clicking through, it turns out there's a good chunk of universes that are repeated to give the illusion of each frame being different. These repeated universes include Rich Evelyn, Evelyn in the IRS building, Hot Dog Hand Evelyn, Evelyn before being brought to the bagel, past Evelyn, and pizza sign spinning Evelyn. Some of the more out there universes that Evelyn traverses though include, and excuse me if I don't recognize some of the references here, Evelyn as a house, Evelyn's face superimposed into a I love tennis meme, I know this is probably a reference to something but I have no clue what, an Illuminati conspiracy theory YouTube video posted 14 years ago that breaks the fourth wall, Evelyn on a zoom call with the directors as she does the acting in front of a green screen, likely done during the height of social distancing measures, Evelyn as a dog, Evelyn as a cat, Evelyn as grapes and as a tree, Evelyn animated, 
and Evelyn on Tinder and Instagram. There is a lot more, but unfortunately, we don't have the time to go through every single frame, like I said in the beginning. Last but not least, this isn't really a thing you missed, but more of an interesting behind the scenes fact is that the Daniels originally intended for Evelyn to have ADHD and for the film to be portrayed about one's experience with a disability. They, of course, scrapped this idea because it would prove to be insensitive to those with ADHD, but the idea originally came about because Daniel Kwan realized that he was living with undiagnosed ADHD during the process of shooting. You can see where their heads were at with that idea and the themes of the movie, but because ADHD is different for everyone who has it, the idea could definitely prove to be problematic. That's all we've got for you guys this time. Be sure to stream the movie to further support A24 to produce more mind-blowing films like this one, and also inadvertently let Hollywood know that the multiverse is the way to go with movies now. I just have a feeling that we're about to enter the era of lots of multiversal movies, so thank Marvel for that one. Of course, we couldn't cover everything about this film, so let us know what you notice in the comments and remember nothing matters so let's enjoy ourselves